Let's talk now to Masood Amin in Minneapolis. He's a professor of electrical and computer engineering and also the director of the Technological Leadership Institute at the University of Minnesota. So let's get right to you. This uh, high tech is something that China is placing a great emphasis on, especially AI and, and other innovative ideas. What, how important is that when it comes to economic growth? Thank you, Elaine. It's transformative. As we have seen, it's probably the third or fourth uh, revolution in agriculture. Every industry has gone through transition, transformations, revolutions over the last 150 years. And in the most recent years, perhaps in the agriculture-wise, we had the agrarian society. Before that, we had hunter-gatherers, agrarian, industrial. During industrial era, up to probably 1940s, we had more or less similar agriculture. Then because of mechanization, large agro farms, we mechanized and we made it more efficient. Unfortunately, part of it was displacement of small farmers. But now is the next wave, which is smarter farming, smarter technology, and digitization of farming and agriculture with really three purposes. Improve the efficiency reduce environmental impacts, and grow the economy. And we also know that uh, precision agriculture technology is being used uh, in the fields uh, to transform crop farming. They're also probably using drones to help with farming and surveying. Um, what excites you the most about what you're seeing here? You know, it's interesting. I should probably point out that uh, having been in Minnesota and being a professor at the University of Minnesota, the father of Green Revolution, Norman Borlaug, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970, was credited on helping China, India, rest of the world to get more yield from the same acreage. And that was the ability to get three times the yield of wheat and rice and other um, stock from the same acreage with minimum environmental footprint. That revolution has led to now to a point that almost every industry we look at, if you think of it as a triangle, the base of the triangle are existing uh, industries, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's energy, power grid, transportation, whatever it is, they're being pulled up toward information technologies and operational technologies with analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and with ability also to deploy them at a very precise robotic um, um, UAVs, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, smaller scale targeted with this deployment of pesticides uh, or whether it is better moisture uh, monitoring from satellite remote sensing, coordinated with these drones, with these UAVs, whether it's the use of global positioning system in addition to the sensors that can monitor distributed sensors, pervasive sensors that can monitor uh, changes in the ecology, in agro, in agro, if you will, agronomics and agribusiness, as well as uh, on the crop. Uh, and, and the growth and the change in the soil, all of those are not possible. I, w I want to get to uh, the streets. So let's go from the fields to the streets about a minute and a half left. We're hearing a lot about smart city initiatives. So how will smart improve our lives and how long before we see aspects of our lives, all of everything we have to go through uh, smart? Are there any downsides, any cons to living smart? Great question. We are already seeing it in cities like Brisbane, cities like, depends on what aspect. We haven't had a holistic transformation on energy, smart grid that underpins everything, and cleaner water, cleaner wastewater management, less traffic. Actually, China, Shanghai, uh, when I was beginning in 2004, 2005, I remember showing live, real-time information of traffic jams and how to reroute. So holistic change is not going to happen as a revolution. 
The system change is going to be gradual, incremental, smarter buildings, smarter campuses for high value manufacturing, for high value IT production, perhaps university campuses, college campuses could be the best candidates. And then homes buildings for aging population that are going to need reliable we infrastructure. We have run out of time, but we, have, we appreciate your insight on all this. This is some exciting stuff to look forward to in the future.